Hi friends, it's Queen Alita. So I'm back with another exciting dream interpretation session. Today, Kaylin from Greensboro, North Carolina is going to be sharing his dream with us. So let's get Kaylin on the line. Hi Kaylin, your mic is muted. Let's see. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, so how are you today? I am good. I am good. Um so many things have come up with the dream god is revealing a lot and i would love to hear your your thoughts as well but it's it's really great to meet i just saw your uh the new message uh <laughs> that you posted yeah and that resonates oh i'm um, so glad it resonates but uh yeah it's, it's been a good day okay i'm glad and i'm excited i like that revelation has come and i want to see if we are on the same page this is going to be so cool all right so yeah take me through your dream i am going to turn my camera off though so yeah okay. no you can problem. go ahead so um this dream i had it was july of 2023 mm -hmm. and 2023 was the hardest year of my life mm -hmm. but um mm -hmm. the dream was in three stages so in the very first part of the dream i was in the middle of nowhere and mm -hmm. it was a white house and like i said it was the middle of nowhere i don't recognize the house at all mm -hmm. and i started in the middle of the conversation talking to a man that basically i'm looking at his face couldn't discern any features but it didn't bother me at all yeah. and he said I'm able and willing to support you in any way that I can. Mm. And he was extremely happy about that. Mm. And the second he said that, I just started just complaining, <laughs> <laughs> just, just really going for it. Um, and I was complaining about my, um, my ex-girlfriend. Okay. Um, but I was just complaining, just really bad, just pouring out. And his face just kind of went to a frown. Mm. And then the scene shifted. And then we were, I was in this like huge banquet hall. I've never been in this hall before, but it was a huge banquet hall. Mm -hmm. um, and I was uh, dressed up. And I don't know if it was for a wedding, a graduation. I don't know. But I know it was for a big celebration. Yeah. Um, and so I happened to see my uncle just standing in this banquet hall, mm. which was odd. Um, there's a story behind that, but it was still odd. Okay. Um, but I saw my uncle and my uncle was happy. He said, you did something. You really did something. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know what he was talking about. So I was just like, yeah, yeah, cool. He says, no, you really did something. And he was just <laughs> smiling. And then somehow my uncle scene shifted a little bit. My uncle wasn't there anymore. And I saw my ex-girlfriend walking towards me. She was in a white dress. Her hair wasn't done. Mm -hmm. um, and as she was walking towards me, like... My uncle kind of went in between us and just kind of grabbed her hand, pulled her outside. And he was almost like, it was almost like a reprimand, but it was just pulled her outside. And when I saw her, I was a little bit frustrated mm -hmm. and I was frustrated. I just kind of let it happen. <laughs> um, but I'm like, okay, that's weird. And then the scene shifted again and I'm following, um, in Waking Life, I know this person. I wouldn't necessarily... I, it was definitely my friend. I felt like in the in the dream, it was my friend. Yeah. But I was following him, and I was dressed. And I don't remember ever getting dressed, but I was wearing um, a full suit, but mm -hmm. without the coat. I was wearing a, like, sackcloth vest. Mm -hmm. I was wearing a white shirt under it. I was wearing shoes. Everything was nice, except for the vest. <laughs> and... I said, when did I get dressed? You know, I was very confused. And so my friend sat down and then instantly I just knew that, okay, I need to finish getting dressed. My coat is across the room. Mm. Let me go and get my coat. And so my friend's waiting for me. And as I try to go and get the coat, that's when I finally noticed a bunch of people are sitting. So my coat's like hanging on a chair mm. and a bunch of people are sitting around my coat. And I just can't get to it. I can't yeah. get to it. Every time I try to press in, I can't get to it. Mm. And then I wake up. Okay. All right. Well, let's give it a shot. <laughs> I like this dream because it has a lot of 
it's very specific and i have an idea of what god is trying to show you through this dream um i'm torn whether i should ask more about your ex girlfriend um but i'll just ask this one question about her is this somebody that you see a potential future with or is this like over and done with no i see a future okay i see a future right. and actually I, I got a um it ruined my life <laughs> even not mm. ruined my life but 2023 was hard yeah because god gave me a word to pursue it and it okay. did not go the way i thought and it actually was very painful and yeah. caused a lot of problems a lot of slander manipulation mm. warfare all okay. kinds of stuff and which is the reason why i was so hurt um yeah because i thought i heard god on it yeah i yeah i definitely picked up that there's a future here like i wasn't sure what was going on but the more that you shared it's starting to make sense because what i get from this dream the main issue is that god is dealing with your heart because something about the way that you are responding to the things that have happened is hindering you like you are in a process you being dressed and you know just that vest which was sackcloth the vest and i know i'm starting at the end of the dream but i'm just going to flow with the holy spirit that vest being the only piece of your clothing that was not as smart or looking as crisp and nice as the rest um shows that there is a heart issue because the vest covers the heart area that came very very strongly to me but going back to the beginning of the dream so being in an abandoned house i did put a question mark here about could there be something related to abandonment that you may be dealing with could that be it i'm not sure but i did write i did put a question mark there and um i noticed that in every scene there was a male figure that was supporting you leading you helping you in a sense which was really nice i wasn't sure if in that first scene that was the lord or just somebody that um or he represents somebody in your life or someone that god is going to bring into your life but the fact that you can really see his face i do get the sense that it may be uh the spirit of the lord or jesus you know just it just felt like god leading you and wanting to help you and you pouring your heart out because of all this hurt <laughs> um and that frown i didn't i didn't get a sense that the frown was because of you but more because of everything that you were saying and you know how jesus has compassion for us and he feels our pain um like when he wept when lazarus had passed away you know so i got that sense of him just understanding what you were going through and him also understanding why you were experiencing what you're experiencing um and almost seeing that oh you don't get it yet as to why you've had to go through such a painful year in 2023 cuz i get it <laughs> i know yeah, what you mean was, <laughs> <it was wrong. laughs> yeah so looking at your ex-girlfriend she had a white dress on but her hair wasn't done and what i'm getting there is that she's also in a process that white dress just representing her walk with the lord um I'm, and i'm not sure what it's like but i just get a sense with her being in this process like she's she's um walking this pure walk with the lord but her hair being undone shows that she's not ready yet there's still some work to be done the lord has to work on her calling her anointing um making her into somebody that will really uh showcase his glory like he wants people to see him through her so he's working on her and i believe your your uncle kind of intercepting and grabbing her and pulling her aside represents just how god is is you know has her in her own process and i think your uncle in this dream does represent like a father figure like the father himself you know um and if you want to interject at any point let me know but i'm just going to go through the whole dream um but yeah if you want to interject let me know so um in that last scene also just very similar to the previous two scenes in that there was that male figure your friend and he was quiet i just got the sense of again the lord wanting you to see certain things like he's there with you but he needs you to pick up on certain things that you're going through so definitely that heart issue with the vest and letting people it's almost like the things that people have done or just the way people are has really gotten to you and it's standing in the way of you 
being completely ready and completely prepared and I don't know if there has to be some forgiveness, a process of letting some things go that has to happen. But that's what I have so far. What are your thoughts? No, spot on. Okay. Spot on. Um, the last year, I would say the last year I've been on a very aggressive forgiveness um, journey. And I would say the last two months mm. has been every day. Uh, for I would say since last year, the enemy has almost been just kind of bubbling up mm -hmm. just thoughts, uh, you know, yeah. bitterness, resentment yeah. against me, even my identity, yes. just all just different things. Um, I felt just how the relationship ended. I felt humiliated and, and weak. Mm -hmm. even. I'm like, well, man, you know, maybe I should have, you know, because I was so bent on God getting the glory, but also vengeance is his. I'm like, I'm not even going to get her back. Mm. And I didn't. I completely just like, no, I'm just going to let God do it. But because of the yeah. way everything ended, I even felt weak. I'm like, you know, if this wasn't a person that God told me to pursue, I would have completely handled it in, in the flesh and differently. But I didn't. <laughs> yes. And I felt awful as a result. Um, and so it just is really, it was a deep, it was a very deep wound. And, yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, spot on. And, and how are you now? Like, uh, how are you feeling about it now, um, just in terms of that relationship was, falling apart and the, that wound? Yeah. I would say 98% healed. There's mm. still, still a little bit left. Yeah. But I think God has taken me through a, just a very transformative journey on it. And then I've also received quite a few prophetic words that mm -hmm. kind of gave some context like when i first had the dream it was just completely confusing it's been over the last i can imagine year and then i'm sorry i said i can imagine sorry to interrupt you no you're fine you're yeah. fine um and so as of recent i received quite a few prophetic words you know some relating to the relationship which i really just put on the table i'm like i'm cool with it mm -hmm. happening or not yeah but then ministry you know um and the coat actually representing something. And yes, then so that put absolutely. me on a whole different journey. So it went from a promise about a relationship yes. to a promise about a mantle. Wow. You know, and I had a few prophetic words. I'm like, God, I had no idea this was even something you were thinking about. <laughs> I love that because um, I did ask myself, what does the, the suit coat mean? And I didn't dwell in it long enough. I was so caught up in all the other stuff. And that makes so much sense. It's the mantle. Wow. It's like, and, sorry, and again, sorry. It just popped in my mind. It's like there is a divine order. Uh, ministry first god wants to have you rooted in this mantle this ministry and then the other things will fall in place um like i said i did get a strong sense that you and are gonna find your way back to each other it's just a matter of timing yeah yeah the reason why so originally um we dated and i broke up with her mm. only because and I knew this when we were dating her, um, her family is kind of into like, it's almost like an African spirituality. Mm -hmm. And then she was not specifically a Christian. Mm -hmm. And I think at that moment we weren't as I was not doing the best I could to be where I was with God, but yeah. I definitely was, I'm definitely a believer. And when we really were getting serious, I'm like, honestly, I want my house to be a Christian home. I want my children to be Christian. Yes. And she was, she didn't want to break up, but she was not necessarily at all wanting to even think about God at all. Mm. And so I I broke up with her and yeah. it was super painful, but I, I believe God told me to. Yeah. But then the very confusing thing after praying and fasting and praying and fasting and after and two dreams, <laughs> I was like, God, are you telling me to go back? <laughs> and, and she, it's like her, everything that I did not see the first time, bitterness, mm. vengeance, mm. Um, character assassination, manipulation, just all kinds of things came out of her that I did not see wow. when I tried to, like, when we tried to get back together. I mean, she was intentionally 
doing things. She mm. mutual friends. She said things. I've had to defend myself in ways that I've never. I'm like, I was good to you. We broke wow. up only, <laughs> only because. And it, it's almost God saying, I want to show you what was there that you didn't see. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I just keep getting the sense of a process. Like, you know, you, you dated, you had to break up because, you know, you started to become serious about what you wanted your household to look like. And then you got back together for God to show you certain things about her. And I believe that the Lord wants you to pray for her, especially since um, her family is into that African uh, spirituality. That stuff is deep. Okay, as a person from Africa myself, I have seen things and heard things that I I can't even begin to fathom how they work. But um, I think just praying for her because she is on a journey. That white dress says a lot. It speaks volumes. She just needs to know who she is. She needs to understand her, her identity. You know, a woman's hair is her crown. You know, we, we take pride in our hair. It's part of the whole look. It's part of our beauty. And I believe God is beautifying her. He's preparing her for her role in the kingdom and in your life and just yeah i see how god is bringing you both through a process together and apart you know depending on where you are on your journey so i'm excited and um i believe the lord wants you to read the psalms i'm not sure which psalms (laughs) yeah i just got a sense um of maybe psalm 139 um that one comes very strongly and anywhere else that the lord leads you there but um yeah this is this is a beautiful dream and i'm excited for your journey um even just the ministry has the lord revealed to you what it is i mean if you're not comfortable to share it's okay but has he revealed no i'm comfortable yeah i'm I'm comfortable so with this promise i I went from completely just thinking about the relationship (laughs) to getting a promise from god to taking literally two prophetic courses to receive in like a bunch of prophetic words Mm. in these courses Mm. and then a few just people i met i'm like i didn't even know this was something that was you know so i think it's 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 prophetic in nature you know and then there's a few other um words that i've already gotten from god years ago business related just other things but it's almost like god wanted to use this Mm. very awful situation to tie it together (laughs) <laughs> yeah um, and you know what i want to say to you about that awful situation because i i know how painful it was and um haven't been through some painful and tough things myself in 2022 and 2023 i i asked the lord one day i said but lord why why did it have to be this way and he immediately responded and said i considered every option and i chose the best one This was going to be the one where your character was going to be refined. You were going to come out stronger. You were going to come out better. Um, And not just you, everybody involved in, in, in that whole painful situation. So I feel the same for you as well, prophetically, that this was the best path he chose for you. Yeah. Amen. Can I pray for you? Absolutely. Yes. Lord, I thank you so much for Kaylin. What an amazing young man with such a passion for you, Lord. We just thank you for his life. I thank you for the plans you have for his life, Father. Right now, Lord, I just cover him in the blood of Jesus Christ, Lord. For that mantle that he's carrying, Lord, we know that the enemy will come like a flood. But Lord Jesus, we know that you raise a standard. And we just thank you so much that the gates of hell cannot and will not prevail against Kalen as long as he is walking in the light, as long as he's protected and under the shadow of your wings. So Lord, we thank you that you give your angels charge over him. We thank you, Father, that um, when he cries out to you, you hear him, that you answer his call and that you satisfy him with a good life, Lord. Thank you that goodness and mercy will follow him all the days of his life. And Lord, I just bless him right now. I thank you for his anointing, his mantle. And Lord, I just pray even, Father, for his ministry. I pray for the marriage, Lord, that is yet to come. And I just bless all of that, Lord. And I thank you for your plans. And I even just cover...
as she came up in this dream lord we just thank you for what you're doing in her life and i just pray for protection over her we cover her in the blood of jesus christ and we stand against the enemy we thank you that we already have the victory that Kaylin already has the victory in jesus christ's name i pray amen amen